Imagine that you were downloading a game on your console. But as many of you know, game files are large and may take many hours just to download. Imagine that you're on a group video call, but because of the latency, your call is very laggy and glitchy, which destroys the experience you can have with the person on the screen. Imagine once more that you're living in a very urban area, and because of all the network interferences, you only see one bar on your phone instead of that perfect five. I will admit that last one's quite a scary thought for my generation. <laughs> but these are all issues we've faced, and there are dozens of other connectivity problems that plague us every single day. But what if I told you that there is a solution to this entire problem, that instead of waiting hours to download one game, you could download dozens in under a minute. That instead of dealing with lag on your video chat, you could enjoy group calls with your friends without the worry of a connection error popping up on your screen. That if you're living in a very urban area, you can still have fast connection with those five bars on your phone. Now, what if I told you that this solution is already here? Well, this solution is the future of our internet, and it's called 5G. So far, as a show of hands, how many of you have heard about 5G? I see a lot, that's awesome. So for those of you who don't know what 5G is, 5G stands for fifth generation mobile communication systems, and it's the newest type of cellular mobile connections. It's essentially the successor for GLTE, the current connection type we see on our phones today. Let me take a minute and take you down the road of how we got here in the first place. It all started with 1G well into the mid 1980s. This is what powered those brick phones, and all it really allowed the user to do was to call and talk. Later, 2G rolled around, which provided features such as texting, which revolutionized the way we communicated. Now, technological advancements such as 3G, which finally allowed us to have mobile data, as well as send pictures to each other via text. Later on, we got 4G, which increased the broadband speed of our mobile data by tenfold, essentially allowing us to do stuff such as stream HD movies through our phone. And now comes 5G, with its revolutionary type that can go ahead and power revolutionary technology such as augmented reality, virtual reality, and even smart cities, which uses data provided from our electronic devices to enhance the quality of life we would have. So let's go and talk about, if I were to bring you back to the issues I stated earlier about current internet speeds, download speeds are quite terrible right now. It may take hours for us to download a couple of games, and sometimes we just give up and choose not to play those games at all. And this doesn't happen with just video games. This happens every single time we want to download a large file from the internet. Well, fortunately, with 5G, we won't have to worry about that anymore. According to the International Telecommunication Union, a specialized agency of the United Nations that deals with telecommunication technologies, 5G can reach peak speeds of 20 gigabytes per second. Now, if you didn't get what that specialized agency does, don't worry. I was just quoting them to sound smart. But essentially, what we want to focus on, however, is this 20 gigabytes. Because if you were to put this into perspective, perhaps with a 4K movie being around 100 gigabytes, with 5G, you would be able to download that 4K movie in just five seconds. So if you ever were planning on downloading a video game, expect to be playing that game within seconds. Now, latency is another issue we have to deal with when on the current network speed of 4G. Latency is essentially the delay before the computer processes what it's supposed to do, and it's measured in milliseconds. So having less milliseconds, having less latency is better, because you want to be seeing what's happening in that very moment not a couple of seconds later. The latency right now for a video chat on 4G is around 10.5 milliseconds. This may not seem like much, but this is with an ideal scenario of 4G. Those that have 4G in places with poor coverage and reception have to do with an even worse latency. Fortunately, with 5G, the latency is around one millisecond, practically a tenth of what it is on 4G. So if you ever were on a video call using 5G, you won't see any lag, you won't see any frame stuttering, and you'll only be able to enjoy the consistency of audio and video there is in that very moment. Now, let's explore another scenario. Ever been in a large event, but notice that your connection is just terrible? Well, this is because of something called connection density. Connection density is essentially how many devices can connect to the network without crashing and slowing down. To put this in more revel relevant or simple terms, imagine that you have guests coming over to your house. When you have guests that come over to your house, usually one of the first questions they ask is, 
hey, what's the Wi-Fi password? So you'll go and give them a Wi-Fi password, they're connected to Wi-Fi, you're happy, they're happy, everything's fine until you have more and more guests that keep on coming over. And when you have more and more guests that keep on coming over, you have more and more people that are asking you, hey, what's the Wi-Fi password? So when you have that connection where you see there is more and more people asking for your Wi-Fi password and you have more and more people that are connected to your network, and if you were to take a look at my very detailed graph I made for you all today, what you see is that what you see is that you have a really increased amount of people that are connected to your Wi-Fi network, but you have a weaker and weaker speed. That's essentially what connection density is in a nutshell. Right now, the connection density for 4G is around 5,000 devices per square mile. The connection density for 5G, however, is 2 million devices per square mile, literally getting rid of any low network problems in highly populated places. You might be thinking, this is great, sign me up. But 5G doesn't just stop there. There are even bigger real-world impacts of 5G. For example, 5G will historically impact new emerging tech sectors, such as the Internet of Things and autonomous vehicles. The Internet of Things, or IoTs for short, is a concept that all our devices will be able to interact and connect with each other to help increase our quality of life. Let's say, for example, you wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Your phone, when sounding the morning alarm, can go and send a signal to your coffee brewer to start brewing some coffee. That way, when you get ready, you go downstairs, you already have freshly made coffee for you. But let's be real, you're not gonna wake up at six o'clock. You hate waking up at six o'clock, we all do. No, you wanna wake up at 6.30. So you can set your alarm, you go back to sleep, you're planning on sleeping for just 30 more minutes, and then you wake up. But oh no, you just ended up waking up at seven o'clock. So you know you're definitely in trouble in terms of work, in terms of your kids, or anything of that sort. And by the way, I speak completely out of my own experience from school, because have you ever woken up five minutes before your school starts and realized that you have a chapter exam in your first period class? It's not a fun experience, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, you realize you're gonna be late to work, but fortunately, your phone can send a signal to your car about this delay, so your car can find the fastest route to your destination. And there are dozens of other examples of how IOTs can actually work, where much of the stuff we see in sci-fi movies could very much be a reality. And with the implementation of IOTs in this entire sector, what we can expect to see is a faster and even smoother process of IOTs in action. Another area of hypergrowth is self-driving cars. Oh, we've all heard about the emergence of self-driving cars with companies such as Uber and Google investing heavily in this new technology. Well, self-driving cars and autonomous vehicles will undoubtedly rely heavily on this entire like, sector and power that 5G can provide. Let's take a look at what exactly a self-driving car needs. It needs a light detection and radar system to go and scan the area and make a 3D map of its surroundings, antennas to provide a GPS coordinates and like the coordinates of where the car is in that very specific moment, a position estimated to go and determine the position of the car itself and other nearby cars and objects, a video camera to go and take note of when the light turns red or green or anything of that sort, and a central computer to go and take of all this data, process it, as well as control driving speed. This is a crazy amount of information they need, the computer needs to process. And on the road, where one second can mean a huge difference would between perhaps a fatality or minor accident, 5G can go in and help the computer process data faster, potentially saving lives of drivers, passengers, and pedestrians alike. Another area of 5G in like this entire application is one of my favorite, remote surgeries. 5G, due to almost having zero latency, can actually allow a doctor or a surgeon perform an operation from thousands of miles away using VR to go ahead and recreate the scene and a special robot arm to control various tasks. Right now, in fact, recently in China, a surgeon completed the world's first remote operation on an animal using 5G. This is groundbreaking as places such as Africa, a continent where there's only one doctor for every 5,000 people, can now have access to urgent medical care its people need. We have the possibility to save thousands of lives, not only just in Africa, but places around the entire world where 5G, or where, oh, sorry, where places around the entire world where healthcare is understaffed and underfunded. And this is all thanks to 5G. In conclusion, 5G is the future of our world. It's how our phones, our computers, and how our lives we powered. 10 years ago, we may have dismissed this entire idea as perhaps a dream, maybe science fiction, and something that may never come true. Now, 10 years later, this technology is right at our door. 
And with more carriers getting on board, as well as more fellow manufacturers competing compatible devices, this future and this entire future is here. And as they say, it's ours for the taking. Thank you.